Hi guys, we are going to speak about working from home, benefits and challenges. So this is SIPS Abu Dhabi branch committee and we are going to talk about working from home. As you know, we had a lot of challenges and this remote working uh, came not by design, but companies were forced to act or ask the employees to work from home because of the COVID-19 situation for safety of the employees and for going and for letting the operations go smoothly. So we were not really prepared for this. We did not uh, purchase equipment or uh, we did not plan uh, for this one. It came upon us and that is why we had different type of situations which we are going to discuss today. We have with us uh, Frederick Magana. He is uh, MSIPS and he is chair of SIPS Abu Dhabi branch committee. Uh, Frederick is a procurement professional with over 10 years of experience in global procurement and supply chain. His qualifications are he is Bachelor of Education in Economics from University of Nairobi and he is MBA from Texas A&M University. His current responsibilities are he is a senior manager contracts responsible to oversee technical aircraft agreement tracking, OEM, strategic supplies performance and contractual commitments. Previously, he worked in Etihad Airways where he managed sourcing and contracts related to aircraft interior category, that is seats, in-flight entertainment and connectivity. Frederick, uh, in uh, addition to volunteering uh, in SIPS branch activities, is also very interested in playing basketball. So that was about Frederick. About me, I am your host, or you can say, I'm facilitating this conversation. My name is Lalit Dhanija. I got uh, like uh, uh, with procurement and supply, I'm associated from last 40 years. And after 37 years of the corporate career uh, in procurement and supply, from last three years, I'm full-time global uh, procurement and supply chain trainer. Uh, and I like uh, volunteering in uh, SIPS activities and from over a decade, uh, I am in UAE and uh, taking interest in uh, SIPS volunteering activities. Uh, we've got another speaker on the panel. We're Dr. Ludmila Rozorova uh, is a, uh, Dr. Ludmila is a project management and supply chain professional with 14 years of experience in oil and gas and energy sectors worldwide. Dr. Ludmilla has worked with international and national companies within the oil and gas and energy industry, where she has helped organizations reach project success in the most efficient manner, increase profitability, reduce the risk, build long-term relationships with partners and suppliers, and streamline project delivery processes. Dr. Ledmila is also an award-winning speaker, iconic women award and student mentor at New York University in Abu Dhabi. She graduated from Leptic State uh, Technical University, Moscow International Higher Business School and uh, Volgograd uh, State Civil Architectural University, and uh, she did PhD from there, and uh, Robert Gordon University in Aberdeen, uh, she did MBA from there, and uh, Dr. Lidmila is PMP certified professional. Now we come, last but not the least, we come to uh, Melissa. Melissa is uh, our uh, secretary uh, for uh, SIPS Abu Dhabi branch committee and she is management accountant, project management, and supply chain management consulting professional. With over 12 years of working experience, 
uh, in the Middle East. Being a mother, a wife, and a perpetual student, currently uh, studying towards dual MBA, and a working professional, she has ensured that she has the right skill set to multitask. Welcome everyone to this uh, podcast on working from home benefits and challenges. How are you guys? Good. Thank you, Lalit. Thank uh, you very much, Lalit. All, all good. Welcome. Anybody has to say anything before we start? Frederick, how are you? Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to say uh, thank you, Lalit, for having me together with the SIPS Abu Dhabi team here for this podcast. It's my pleasure. And uh, we are here to share with the rest of uh, procurement professionals and everybody else who is uh, working from home and uh, going through all these challenges. Thank you very much, Lalit. I'm fine and in good health. Uh, thank you, Fred. You are our chair of Abu Dhabi branch committee. And thank you for uh, allowing us and giving us the opportunity for having this session. And uh, without much ado, I will go to the first question. So guys, what were the benefits and challenges faced when working from home? Very simple and straightforward question. Still, I think it is an interesting one. So Fred, what do you think about it? What were the benefits and challenges you faced while working from home? Well, when, uh, thank you, Lalit, for your question. Simple, straightforward, but not really easy to put it into uh, real, uh, real, uh, measurable answer. Uh -huh. The biggest, the biggest concern which comes to me when I look at the benefits and challenges is uh, work-life balance. Mm -hmm. And 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 you find that in pro in procurement professional, we are the enablers. And I'm going down to my profession. Uh -huh. So we being enablers to execute our role efficiently, we really need to manage our stakeholders. And key stakeholders, uh, uh, it's imperative to engage key stakeholders on a face-to-face -face conversation. Yeah. Absence of that, it becomes quite difficult to execute our tasks. At the right. same time, that's one of the, one of the challenges I can mention. But the beauty of working from home is that work-life benefit. So there's a balance in, in there because you are at home and if you plan yourself well, you can be yeah. able to kill two birds with one stone. This is a benefit and can be a challenge because yeah. it's a benefit because it enables those people, especially who have families, to stay there at home, nurturing their families, and at the same time working. Absolutely. But I believe Melissa will be able to come around and challenge me and say, hey, Fred, <laughs> uh, this is a challenge. So that is uh, my initial remark, uh, uh, Mr. Lalit. Wonderful. And Melissa, what do you say about this? I know you've got different type of challenges. Let us hear about them. <laughs> so, so, so to give the context to uh, the audience, I have a wonderful, um, rather poorly at the moment, 18-month-old um, son. And it's been an absolute blessing to be able to be at home and spend more time with him um, and, and also have the support from companies, um, my company in particular, to be able to stay at home and care for him during the time now when nurseries um, and schools are, are closed. The flip side is um, it's very, very difficult to structure and organize your day around a toddler. Um, so organizing meetings, um, you know, trying to be professional when you've got a, a toddler running around in a nappy in the background um, can be rather embarrassing. Um, so I suppose if I start with the challenges, um, you know, for me, the working environment, you know, um, unless you've got a dedicated space within your home, particularly if you've got a family home with, with children and, and young children in particular, unless you have a dedicated space that you can sort of shut off that family life um, from it's quite difficult to be able to work from home and um, there's also you know we also struggle with communications you know so you're you're very used to sitting next to your colleague and talking to your colleague directly if you don't have that direct you know um, interaction and, and, and engagement with your your colleagues you need to develop 
new systems of communication to make sure that, that um, those communication channels sort of continue to flow. Um, one thing that I've really struggled with um, is really the segregation of work and home life. Um, it's wonderful to be able to do it at home. Um, I, and my company are wonderful in that, that they allow um, and, and they've supported flexible working hours, etc. But it's also sometimes difficult to switch off work when you're at home. So if you've got a, a stack of work that needs to be done, it's in the evening, it's in your home, it's sitting there, it's waiting for you to do. So it's, it's sometimes quite difficult to segregate the, the two of those. And, and again, it goes back to that, you know, if you can make a, a space that is a dedicated space, your home office space, I think that makes it easier. Um, I, I think something that we mustn't underestimate as well is also the emotional and psychological challenges faced with being in the house the whole time and not being able to get out. Um, you know, COVID is a unique situation. You know, work from home may be the way that we go COVID or no COVID in the future. But I think consideration needs to be given to to employees um, to ensure that um, they're not in the home the whole time, and there is that um, you know that the emotional or psychological needs are also met um, you know as part of that. Um, that said, you know, for me, you can hear I can talk a lot on the subject. Um, there is also a heck of a lot of benefits. You know, the flexibility has been amazing. I have colleagues in the UK. I've got um, clients that are in, in Asia. And the fact that I'm now not working a nine to five, that I can meet with them on a Friday evening, I can talk to them on a Sunday morning, um, mm -hmm. and I have the flexibility to care for my family as well is fantastic. We've also found that although communication can be a problem, we've improved our communications because we're actively having to practice communications and, and effective communication management. And in turn, also productivity seems to have improved because, you know, sometimes you sit and chit chat with people and maybe are not as productive in the office. And when you're sat at a desk um, at home, you know, you, I, I know certainly for myself, if I'm un uninterrupted, I can get through volumes of work. So, Productivity can be improved, communication can be improved, and, and overall, we've actually found a far greater um, improved teamwork within the company that I actually work. Um, so that's me. <laughs> Wonderful, uh, Melissa. That was a very comprehensive reply. And uh, Dr. Ludmilla, anything add, uh, else you want to add on this one? I actually, I would agree with uh, previous speakers, with uh, Frederick and Melissa. There are actually a mixture of uh, benefits and challenges of these situations. And mm -hmm. uh, yes, as procurement professionals, uh, our main task is to coordinate uh, with stakeholders. Uh, and very often there are internal stakeholders. And uh, I actually, I found this challenging from um, in the current situation to collect all of the requirements with all of the stakeholders on time. Using emails is more, more actually... Uh, difficult because basically people also have their uh, their own daily agendas and that's why i think for procurement professionals it's become a bit more challenging but at the same time um there are also benefits of this like um like flexibility and increase of productivity because like now where you're working from home again like you have as melissa mentioned you have this uh, pile of works in, um, in your desk, which you know what you need to do. And at the same time, you can do it like any time because you don't have um, any more fixed hours. So you right. started working like even later than basically official working days finished. Then uh, you're working over a weekend. So then you work and uh, collaborate or have meetings with uh, colleagues um, in different countries who can in different time zones. So it's all, actually also these things um, help to improve uh, the productivity. But from the benefit side, of course, I mean, I should mention safety because it's basically, it, it was uh, made for our own uh, safety. Yeah. And uh, also working from home can um, um, enable companies to, to do some cost reductions, I would say, right, like uh, for for office space, for travels. And uh, actually many people now realize that uh, not many travels actually uh, necessary to perform the work. Even like before, 
um, like working from home, people was traveling for, a, for to attend some like one day meeting. So people realized that they can save money on the travels and not, not all of the travels is required. So people can have basically like online, uh, like call online meetings. But at the mm-hmm. same time from challenges sites was um, IT systems and people readiness working from home. Because when, you, when we started actually, maybe now many people already adjusted, but from the beginning it was a difficult, uh, people was not ready from a skills point of view to operate um, online, all, all the activities online, like to have online meetings, to, to work from home, to coordinate. It was required some uh, time for adjustments, but I think now is, uh, is getting better. Uh, absolutely. I think uh, we have said many good points, which uh, really every one of us uh, experienced uh, these points. Uh, and see, this is a whole new way of doing business. We are in the virtual world. And uh, only the point which I see is there are emotional uh, points also in here. Some people will like to feel connected. And the type of communication was also mentioned. So what type of communication we should have? What should be the frequency? Uh, how frequently should our manager talk to us? Will it be micromanagement? Or will it be taking care of us? Or would it be telling us the status of things? So because there are no procedures and policies around this, uh, it came to us all of a sudden. We were not prepared. And uh, like uh, Dr. Ludmel was saying, maybe in initial days, we were found wanting on many fronts. Uh, maybe we did not have essential things, like we need to have equipment. Even we need to have table and chair, we need to have a spot in the house where we can work. And it is not that simple. Some people have four or five members or six members. Children are working for school. They are learning uh, online and they have to be busy in school and parents have to help them they need to have a laptop or a computer. Everyone needs to have a laptop or a computer accessibility to that. So, and the type of a workstation you need to have. So it was a a matter of having essential things like equipment, accessibility, internet. Now we will say, yes, internet is available. Internet is available. We used to even see Netflix, but when sometime we are talking on video conferencing, this uh, uh, availability bandwidth uh, issues are there for that one. So uh, those are type of challenges which we, of course, uh, encountered. And of course, we thought it will be a lot of flexibility and working from home, it will be easy. Uh, Frederick talked about uh, work-life balance. Yes, we found challenges. Sometimes children need uh, attention. And uh, uh, maybe at the same time, you got a meeting and other time uh, you need to take care of other household uh, issues. Uh, Some thing might have come grocery or uh, courier or other issues are there which you have to uh, like uh, cater to. So all these things, but only the point is uh, uh, what I found with my experience, I've been doing remote working from three years. But that was a different type of remote working. It was not that everybody is online and we need to download Zoom and we need to have everyday number of webinars or Zoom meetings. So it was quite different. And what I found is what works for us is if you've got a regular routine. Now, from the lesson learned and from my experience, I said, fine, you have to get ready at 8 o'clock in the morning and in front of the computer you should have a project discipline. You are in the office from say eight to four. So after that, you have to check out. Uh, Dr. Ludmila was uh, uh, mentioning like we can work uh, later in the day. Yes, that is a tendency. Now people are working more and sometimes they get more stressful and more burned out. So by my experience, what I found is it is better to have a fixed uh, uh, routine like we are going to office And of course, we have to check out and of course, take care of our family members also. So this is my uh, contribution to this uh, particular question. So we will uh, move on to the next one. Anybody wants to add anything else? 
I would like to add actually something. Yes, please. Uh, is uh, regarding the importance of, have, of having a proper workplace. Yes. Not only to separate yourself from their uh, like work and the house mentally, so you can uh, concentrate and focus uh, delivering the work, but mm -hmm. at the same time, it's very important to have a comfortable desk so you, in order to avoid health issues. So I know some of my colleagues, for example, who didn't have proper setup at home mm -hmm. um, to, to have a like, proper desk, proper chair, they, they experience um, severe back pain, actually, because sitting on their chair, which is not uh, really comfortable, or sitting in the sofa, and yeah. that's why it's also very important to, to be prepared for this and uh, to have a special desk, a located desk with a like, comfortable chair so you can, um, you can avoid basically health issues afterwards. And this is uh, also productivity is also high. You feel more formal and your productivity is high like you are in the office. Now, a similar situation I can recollect. Uh, my daughter, she works for City of Edmonton in Canada. So when this uh, suddenly they were encountered with this problem, these issues were there with many employees. They did not have workstation for all the uh, family members. So, you know, a good thing happened. Company allowed them to take their equipment from the office to the home, to home so that they can work. Even some people took chairs and desks and computers from the office, they got it issued and they were working for more productivity and ease and for safety, like you are saying, ergonomics and uh, for having safety and for not having health issues, back pain and other things. So that was a good point, Dr. Ludmilla. A very important question, but um, I, th I think, um, you know, employees really need to um, take their obligations to their staff seriously and also take into consideration that um, employees all have different circumstances. You know, um, some of us are blessed to have our own homes and our own spaces, even if it's a little bit difficult with families, but not everybody has that. Um, you know, there are single people, there are people that, um, you know, have are, you know, within bed sits and it's, you know, they, they physically cannot accommodate, you know, the sort of work from home arrangements. So I think there, there needs to be, um, employers need to be considerate of, of, you know, individual employee circumstances as well. Uh, well said, and uh, absolutely, this is the thing which we are hearing. This is the emotional angle which I was trying to discuss earlier. Manager should understand each and every employee and what the issue, what type of issues they have. And those type addressing uh, those type through regular communication and to see if uh, anything can be done to facilitate that uh, particular problem. Before, uh, when we say they're working remotely, we used to go to uh, coffee shops. We can work from coffee shops. But see, now in this situation, you can't go do that. You can't even go and you have to work from home. So different type of challenges are there during this pandemic. Now we come to the next question. Uh, how much of work or how much of your work you are able to perform remotely? Uh, what difficulties, if any, are you facing in completing your work? So, Fred, do you want to take this one? Oh, uh, thank you, Lalit. Working from home, uh, when I look at it, has enabled me to uh, really document every engagement and uh, do my work holistically. By that I mean, <laughs> I don't have a routine. I'm one of those people. Mm -hmm. When I get up, when I get up in the morning, I already have my laptop uh, on, on, on me by my side, by my bed, mm -hmm. and I start working. And it's nonstop for me. I keep on working until perhaps midnight. Compared mm -hmm. to, because I have to compare this to the normal pre-COVID period, yeah. I used to have an eight to five or six uh, kind of job and mm -hmm. come home until the next day. This has opened up, it's a can which has opened and work for me is nonstop. Uh -huh. Yes, I'm able to execute more but I think working from home with the present situation, COVID, 
it has it has made work become even much more because mm -hmm. uh, in absence in absence of face to face conversation, right. I find uh, my team sending a lot of emails to each other, and this I'm speaking on behalf of myself because I'm a people's person. And in absence of face-to-face -face conversation, I find it very difficult to, 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 to negotiate internally, to password my team to complete some tasks within yeah. a certain time frame. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this spills over. It spills over and lead time in getting just tasks executed internally has been, has been, a, has been a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, 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 with saying that, I see a lot of opportunity in here. Yeah. Moving yeah. forward, it's enabled myself together with the team and my organization to streamline work, to mm -hmm. realize what are the gaps which were in there previously. Right. And we are already uh, looking into how is it going to be post-COVID? Do we really need to be in office every day? Mm -hmm. As you can see in New Zealand, uh, the president has passed on a law which allows them to work for four days instead of five days. So mm -hmm. there are opportunities which are, which are coming out of this. And as procurement professional, my role is to look for opportunities in whatever circumstance which we can drive value in it. So there goes me. I think there are a lot of opportunities in here and I think mm -hmm. it's something good. Okay, great. And Melissa, what do you think about how much of work you are able to perform remotely and what were so, the difficulties you faced? So from a technology point of view, um, I have the technology available to me um, and the facilities available to me to complete all of my work um, uh, remotely from home. And, and even when I've been in the office, most of my colleagues have been at home. So I'm using those same remote technologies to, to communicate with my colleagues. Um, mm -hmm. The biggest difficulty has been for me in, in managing a, a young family um, mm -hmm. within normal office hours. Um, that, that has been a challenge. So um, to complete my normal workload within that nine to five is not possible. Mm -hmm. Mm. But um, again, we've been afforded the flexibility to be able to work evenings, to work mornings, to work, you know, to, so long as the work um, and the output is delivered, um, you know, I have the technology to be able to do that from home. Okay. All right. So different type of challenges you're facing. And Dr. Ludmilla, what are your views on this? Uh, 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 like... Uh, how much of your work you are able to perform remotely and what uh, difficulties, if any, you faced uh, for completing your work? Actually, um, for me, it's just pure personal, um, mm -hmm. I cannot say even issue, like personal perspective, say like this, because um, I always supported flexibility and I was always like in favor of flexibility instead mm -hmm. of uh, fixed working hours. And my personal perspective, actually, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm, I have to be honest, I'm not a morning person. And my peak of flexibility coming close to the, oh, my peak of productivity coming close to the noon time. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was happening before when I was uh, having the fixed office hours, I have to stay longer in order to complete uh, work in, in office because my productivity peak is in the evening. Mm -hmm. and to try to shift more non-productive work uh, in the morning. So now I can use the morning time basically to do things maybe like which is required for my like, personal home issues or something like this and yeah. to use my more productive time when I'm more productive actually to deliver the work. That's why um, working from home actually I was able to do even more work Big. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, okay. then I was able to do perform it in office. And at the same time, uh, my current, for example, uh, work involved working with um, our headquarters in, uh, in Europe and uh -huh. uh, when we have already time difference. And actually, this also working from home helped me align these working hours basically with hours in Europe. That's why we didn't have this overlap anymore. So we had just uh, basically the same working hours and it helped me to to reach right people on time 
and basically to more efficiently to to coordinate and facilitate the activities so that's why from my from my personal point uh -huh. of view i i was able actually to improve my productivity okay mostly it was positive mostly you welcome working remotely and you did not find any handicaps in fact on the contrary it helped you to be more productive yes absolutely yeah. Uh, you know what I've observed uh, while working remotely. Before, if I used to sign up for a webinar, it is hundred percent like ninety percent time I will miss that one. You are busy in so many things, you will not log in, and later you will uh, listen to the recorded version if you get time. Now the change which I have seen is there are so many Zoom meetings, so many webinars are being held, and we have time to attend them. We attend so many of them. Uh, remotely and okay that some are optional some are mandatory and i have seen people who are engaged in so many meetings video conferencing or zoom meetings which they are supposed to be present and here some of my friends they are not finding time to work uh, actually use the time to work where it really matters because they are wa wasting so much time on video conferencing and zoom meetings. So there has to be purpose in every meeting. It has to be effective. People who are attending are really needed for that one so that we conserve time. And work cannot drag out in the evenings. We have to check out from the work to be more efficient. And from time to time, if you're working remotely, maybe we have to take five, 10, ten minutes break, try to re-engage, maybe go to the window, relax a little bit, all right? We are not going back to home, but we are trying to re-engage and taking a, a five-minute stroll and trying to come back to work so that we are more productive. And uh, of course, like we, I already mentioned, we need to have some type of discipline. And sometimes the full day will go with the if we don't have any priorities, if we don't uh, plan properly, the full day will go in non-productive things. So we need to have task of the day or maybe two or three priorities which we want to work on if we want to be more productive. Uh, this is uh, based on uh, my experience. So, okay. So coming to the third question, uh, what could be the justifications to consider working from home either completely or partly uh, as the new uh, normal, uh, which could be post COVID-19? What would be the justification for working from home completely or partly? Fred, what are your views yes. on this? Yeah. Yes, Lalit, this is a very nice question. I like this question because, <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. this is when you look at the total cost of ownership. Uh -huh. Companies have invested a lot in technology right now. Mm -hmm. Families have invested in a lot of technology, buying laptop. Maybe people have five children. They bought mm -hmm. laptop for each one of them to work from home and homeschool. You know, they go side by side, work from yes. home and homeschooling. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You cannot let this go to dream. Mm -hmm. So that is one justification. Technology has been invested. There are companies which used to operate as a, you know, uh, uh, lean companies with no e uh, e ERPs, working with Excel, but mm -hmm. it's, in, it's, it's, it's inevitable for those, it was inevitable for those companies to continue with that brick mortar approach. Mm -hmm. And at this particular time, they moved ahead and subscribed into uh, the, the market leaders of uh, ERP, talking about SAP, uh, Oracle, and so forth. Yeah. That uh, that investment cannot just be led to go into drain. Mm -hmm. And for them to maximize that and get return on investment, there has to be an opportunity or they have to review their policies as an organization and embed policies of working from home post-COVID. Mm -hmm. This will come as an advantage to them as one of uh, the panelists, uh, Ludmila said, there are opportunities for saving. In yeah. the long term, yeah. companies, organizations are not paying for the facility management costs, water, electricity. So when you, when you bind this together, uh, technology-wise, what the company has invested and what the company is going to, 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 the cost that the company is going to avoid, 
this can translate into a lot of uh, savings for future mm-hmm. because at this moment, it's inevitable for organizations to look for opportunities for cost savings. Coming from an airline background, airline aviation industry has been really paral- paralyzed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, 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 and you can see the skies are, the skies are just empty. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are stark. And that is a source, that is a core business. So if that core business is not generating an income and the outlook is not getting better in the near future, mm-hmm. it, it doesn't mean that is the end of the world. It's still an opportunity for organization to take that to their advantage and see that still organization can still keep their employees instead of letting them go and work from home at at perhaps new new package or a different package for a period of time. So yes, there is an opportunity and it's possible, but it's on case to case basis. Yeah, well said, uh, Fred. And Melissa, what are your comments on this one? Uh, um, justifications. Mm-hmm. So, so I would um, agree with both what Fred said and what Luke Miller um, commented on, on, on earlier um, mm-hmm. in that the, the key things for me are, um, you know, the, flexi- the attractiveness of flexibility in, work, um, in the work environment is really, really key. And, mm-hmm. and obviously there are a significant amount of cost savings to be achieved on things like travel, on office space, etc. Um, one thing I wanted to touch on is, is actually, um, you know, there's, there's so many articles and so much research done on each generation, what is the most important thing that they look for within a working environment. And if you look at the millennial generation, it mm-hmm. is workplace flexibility. So I think that's something that's historically been lacking in the Middle East. Um, it's a lot more prevalent in, in Europe and, you know, you're talking about New Zealand as well. Um, where, where there is um, more flexibility within the working environment. I think it's really, really attractive to the younger generations um, and it's a priority for them. So, you know, that's the direction we need to, to go to attract and retain, you know, um, top talent. Um, there are a lot of disadvantages as well and, and, and you know, sort of arguments against um, work from home and, and those need to be worked through. I mean, key things are things like protecting your informa- intellectual property and um, mm. making sure that you have um, technologies that um, f- facilitate and uh, are enablers to, you to do your jobs from home but also protect the company um, because you, you don't want loss of data, you don't want loss of information, um, you know, through your employees not being within your work environment. And, and at the moment, the, the, sort of the biggest thing, that um, challenge that would be faced within that um, is the legal um, structure and the legal environment because most companies here within the UAE, if they're onshore or offshore, have a requirement for a certain amount of office space for X amount of, um, you know, headcount or uh, visas. So if we move yeah. away from that, what does that look like? You know, um, people are, are currently legally obliged to invest in office space. Um, yeah. You know, would they allow for employees to work from home if they've invested within, you know, in this office space? So I think those are sort of challenges that have to be worked through, but not insurmountable. Mm-hmm. Good. Uh, you have raised some uh, very relevant and good points. Uh, which I'll be maybe touching on after uh, Dr. Ludmilla's view. So, Dr. Ludmilla, what do you feel about uh, justification to consider working from home completely or partly after COVID-19? Well, I actually, I, I would agree with, uh, with Frederick and Melissa. And Melissa mm-hmm. actually touched really sensitive point, I think, from, uh, from all people working in the Middle East, from all organizations and personnel as well. And um, the fact that they have actually these uh, visa requirements is uh, uh, forcing companies to invest in the office. But at the same time, is now is uh, appearing the opportunity for to have more employees with uh, flexible working hours. So mm-hmm. basically, uh, people can, can share the desks. And some of the organizations, especially consultancy organizations are implementing this approach. So people don't have a fixed desks or fixed um, uh, places in their offices. 
I have just desk which uh, any employee can uh, can use, and uh, that's why it's allowed them basically to have smaller office and um, bigger amount of people with this mm-hmm. flexibility. So people can work from home, and if it's really necessary, they they can uh, they can go for um, to office like to attend the meeting or to have any some uh, like vital discussions. So that's why this is a further opportunity. Uh, for the organizations, for example, for the cost reductions. But at the same time, as Melissa, Melissa mentioned, yes, the, the legislation procedure need to be maybe uh, revised to allow organizations uh, to, to use these opportunities. And uh, okay. so I also think that um, good justification actually could come from uh, lessons learned from working from home such as, uh, again, a uh, reduction in, uh, in not only in offices, but again in um, cost of travels. Then also, as we can see, was a lot of a reduction from, uh, let's call it, um, sometimes non-productive time, like in meeting hours. Some organization has enormous amounts of meetings during the day. And some mm-hmm. people, especially like top management and executives, they, they only was able to jump from meeting one meeting to another one. And Absolutely. like till the end of the day, they were just able to approach to their desk and actually to work when actually end of the day, they're already quite exhausted with this. And um, I think also working from home showed not, that not all the meetings are necessary and uh, amount of the meetings actually has reduced. So I think this also could be good lessons learned. And um, so we can also understand yeah. office hours. So we need to have that discipline. Even now, I am seeing people have these too many uh, meetings uh, online. So there, as I said earlier, we need to have some discipline and every meeting should have a purpose. So we have to contain our time, make time more productive, actual time more productive. Now coming back to this uh, question of uh, working, uh, justification for working from home post-COVID, Again, there'll be uh, some uh, critical issues or sensitive issues which uh, Melissa has mentioned, legal viewpoint. You're getting visa and you have to, of course, uh, you have to have office space. You need to have logistics. You need uh, to spend money within the company, uh, within the country, that is uh, in country value. If you are working from home, it could be anywhere. People, they will not be traveling. They can uh, experts like in one of uh, some of the podcasts which I conducted. So speakers were saying, we need not bring the experts uh, down to UAE. They can work from anywhere uh, in their home countries and uh, remotely we could uh, talk to them or some of the employees we could uh, relieve and they can go and work from their own countries. But what repercussions this will have on macroeconomics that we will have to really debate and see. And my other point is, uh, okay, being in the office environment from uh, over three decades, uh, I've seen whatever you do, there are certain set of employees which, who require some supervision, who are not like very productive as others. So in this environment, when you don't see them physically, it will be more of a challenge to engage them. So for managers, they will need to set expectations and performance KPIs and have to have a different type of routine for communication, how to communicate with them, how frequently to communicate with them. Uh, so those type of issues will be there if you are uh, talking about working completely or maybe a good percentage uh, working from home. And having said that, like we would have all heard, somebody was giving example of New Zealand, four days out of seven, they will work. And Twitter, they have said, you have all heard about it, that some employees who they choose for life, they can work from home, like fully. Uh, so companies are moving on to working. Some of the companies are moving on aggressively from working from home. Could be convenience, could be savings or could be a mixture of both. And now this brings us to the next question, which is, uh, will a COVID-19 result in an adjustment in how we manage supply chains? So who is going to take this question? 
So, Lalit, I, I can give my thoughts on it. Um, I'll be honest with you, I, I haven't really been, in, uh, well, within our organization, we haven't really been affected um, in terms of oh. our supply chain. Mm. But um, I would see that, you know, to de-risk supply chains, I'm sure that supply chains will, you know, currently supply chains can be extremely complex and extremely sophisticated, but it takes one failure within that supply chain for the whole supply mm. chain to break. So I would assume that, we would be moving to uh, less complex supply chains, um, more focus on on local and and sort of regional um, sourcing, and of course diversification of your supply chain. So, you know, always making sure that you have a backup of your critical, um, particularly your critical um, suppliers, because you, you need to know that you're you're able to continue as a business. Yeah, uh, this is uh, very relevant points. Uh, any more uh, contribution? Fred, yeah. you want to say something? Or Ledmila? I would agree with Melissa regarding uh, the risk in the supply and um, to have a backup for their, for their key suppliers, actually. What, uh, what actually has happened that uh, when actually COVID, um, had, I don't know, like occur and ha- has happened, we all started working from home. It was a significant effect actually on their on the supply chain industry particularly because uh, I mean there are lots of uh, factories which with uh, equipment manufacturing I mean not only equipment many factories uh, manufacturing or uh, plants are located in China and China was the first one who actually shut down all of these activities and the same mm-hmm. time was also imposed the travels restrictions so not only people were not able to travel, but also logistic organizations were not able to ship the goods. Even, even some uh, goods were like uh, already ready from their um, um, manufacturer facility to be shipped. So it took them additional time actually to understand what is happening and what are the new rules for, uh, for a shipping. Yeah. And at the same time, also before it was, we we say like this, we lived in a global economy. So you can, uh, like being in supply chain, you can order material uh, from anywhere, any part of the world. For example, if I mm-hmm. need to deliver it in Middle East, I mean, I have a project in Middle East, I can uh, order some material from, uh, from Canada and US, for example, which is another part of the world. Yeah. And uh, now I think um, with all of these situations will be lessons, not only like the risking, their supply and have also backup for their key suppliers, but also to to use more local suppliers. So to build um, this uh, like necessary, like, I don't know, manufacturing facilities within the country. So you'll be right. sure it also could be like part of their uh, de-risking activities. So to utilize more local suppliers and maybe sometimes you need to help them to develop, to bring it in a proper level of the quality of their services, of the quality of the materials. So I think this is uh, will be the something like post-COVID exercises, which uh, could also affect the supply chain. But also uh, supply chain professionals, I would say, they acquire some definitely new skills during their uh, like COVID and working from home. Now, like previously, for example, we have... Um, face-to-face like negotiations with uh, like contractors now is everything is requ- needs, required to be online so I think it's particularly new skill to have a uh, contract negotiations online so I think this is something uh, which uh, supply chain professionals acquired new skills uh, during COVID so and I mm-hmm. think this also uh, could be also used in a future uh, in a future model of supply chain. Okay, good. Uh, uh, these are very uh, good points, relevant points. Like if we talk about sourcing, uh, we had a charm and everybody wanted to go to low cost countries. There was a okay, fascination for that. You have to be more competitive. But the lesson learned have been uh, you have to be more self-reliant. Like India, they have said they have uh, used the COVID to uh, uh, embark upon the campaign in the nationwide campaign, be self-reliant. Like that, every country and every economy, they have to see that the sourcing is done within uh, the country. In UAE, 
already this initiative had started from adnog before uh, like from 2 3 years they are working on in country value and it is more relevant now and there were many significant gains uh, uh, for the uae economy from uh, in country value and that is more relevant now so the sourcing should be from the local sources which helps uh, economy in uh, various different ways and also it helps the supply chain in uh, lead time also uh, uh, guys it is uh, a wrap up time now so uh, closing remarks if you got uh, anything to say uh, all right uh, dr ludmila anything you want to say well i i would like to say that uh, uh, every every challenge is always an opportunity and every opportunity is always a challenge and uh, i think we always need to to see in the both sides of any situations and uh, for example covid put us in a challenging situations but we also can um, can take opportunities from this for the future which we can bring and uh, bring also lessons and how we can improve our work and how we can uh, improve uh, supply chain model in the future so that's why my closing remark will be always look in opportunities in every challenge uh, right uh, well said and see now this is the opportunity when we are going digital we have to be digitally ready uh, it all depends on the maturity of the organization some were ready others were partly ready some were not ready but now when we talk about uh, going uh, digital or working remotely we have to have three things which is a communication a procedure process for communication uh, how frequently we communicate who communicates with whom and on what issues and uh, whether the communication is enough or we need to restrict the communication so that people can work uh, on the core issues and also this is an opportunity for improving our processes many processes which are not there uh, like for working from home privacy issues legal issues or we want to fine tune other processes that we'll have to see and of course this has also impact on culture um, mm. uh, like uh, we have to uh, see about the cultural issues about the emotional issues because it is whole a uh, new way of doing business that we are encountering so these three things uh, communication processes culture uh, issues we have to address and by this uh, i will like to thank all of the panelists or the speakers uh, frederick uh, melissa and dr ludmila uh, it was really uh, uh, like an honor to work with you and uh, good uh, points were were brought by you which contributed uh, to this discussion on uh, working from home benefits and challenges thank you all of you Thank you very much Lalit it was lovely. Thank you very much Lalit for hosting us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you Lalit for hosting us and I hope to see you soon after covid eh? <laughs> uh, sure we will meet and uh, we will have some uh, face to face uh, meetings as well as some more uh, podcast also for logistics reasons that is more convenient like you said remote working has its uh, benefit also. Thank you guys.